I am Matt Frazier. But the big news today is that I am joined by Carly Bodrug, host, or uh, I guess, you know, as we all know from Plant U and author of the new book, Scrappy Cooking. Uh, Carly, it's just I, such an honor to have you on. I'm, I'm pumped. We've done like 350 of these shows or something, and this is the most nervous I've ever been for one. So oh my gosh, congratulations. don't be nervous. I know, isn't it funny? You know, because I'm out of the I'm out of the rhythm of the uh, the frantic book tour thing. I mean, you must have been doing, what, dozens of these things already? Oh yeah, dozens of them, and I do get nervous before every single one, and this is my first time ever going live on YouTube, and then like my first time ever going live on my channel. So it's a whole, it's a whole new thing, but this yeah. is awesome. Well, we, we will see how it works. Uh, and you said you just, you just finished with uh, Will B, is that right? Dr. Yeah, B? so Dr. Will Balsowitz on the Gut Health MD on Instagram. I just did a live with him, which was super fun. We talked all things scrappy and uh, now I'm here with you. So it's a good start to the day, I'd say. Very good. Yeah, definitely. Uh, cool. All right. So, who else? I mean, last time, didn't you get on like Rachel Ray last time or, or yes, other big yes. stuff like that? So Rachel Ray, I was on for my first book two years ago, but she doesn't have a show anymore. It got canceled or okay. not canceled or ended or whatever else. It looks like she's going to start another one, but I was just on the Sherry show in New York for Scrappy. And then I have a bunch of things coming up in two weeks. I'm flying out to LA and then New York. So I don't even want to jinx them. So I'm not going to say what it is, but I do have more TV coming out. So that's super exciting. Wow. Okay. Yeah. So, so the plant-based morning show isn't the, uh, isn't the number one top event. Oh, it is the, the number uh... one as far as I'm concerned. <laughs> oh, good. All right. Well, I'm glad to hear that. Uh, very excited about the book. I am traveling and I forgot to bring the book. So all I have is my mom's house and she has the original plant news. So I don't know if it's got the cooking in front of me, but you have graciously sent me the PDF. Um, but it's a great book. We've been using it already. We've made uh, a bunch of stuff. We made the bean, the pantry bean salad. Oh, and, yay! Uh, and it saved us. And I'll, I'll get to that question later about how, what we can do on these crazy weeknights when we need, uh, need to cook food ahead of time or figure something out because the kids are at soccer and we just have no time to do anything like cooking. Uh, so we'll get to that in a minute. But anyway, it's a fantastic book. Uh, if you haven't already gotten a copy, go get that, uh, I guess, wherever. Amazon, independent Any stores, Barnes & Anywhere books are sold. Is there, you got a preferred place or just whatever? I guess you can't pick favorites, right? I, I can't pick favorites, but I mean local bookstores for sure, just because I think they need our support more than ever, especially after COVID. Um, and, but I mean, it, it is on Amazon. It's on sale right now at Amazon and Target. It's 30% off. Um, maybe your local bookstore will honor that, but it's awesome to see it drop on the sale. And what a lot of people don't realize is like authors do not know when their books are going on sale. I like to say, it's like if you're a fashion designer and you've designed a piece of clothing and now it's getting sold at like Zara or something. You don't have control once it gets out into the world and you don't know when it's going to go on sale or anything. So it's pretty cool because it went on sale right the day before the book came out, which is awesome. I, like I'm thrilled that it's on sale, uh, but I don't know how long it will last. So if you're wanting to get a copy, I think now is a really awesome time. We additionally have a whole suite of freebies that you can take advantage of. So over $200 in digital freebies, including I, we did this amazing vegan cheese making ebook, a snack ebook, a meal plan, all of this fun stuff. So after you purchase, make sure to go to scrappycookbook.com and then upload an image of your receipt and you will be able to claim all those freebies very good very nice all right um good yeah we i remember with the plant-based athlete we like got surprised on it must have been thursday or friday morning and we found out that suddenly it was on sale at like some huge discount We're like this is the perfect thing that we need right now because now yeah. we have to email the list and say discount we don't know how long it's going to last so go get it so that is exactly the situation you should get this book now while it's on sale um and you won't regret it this we'll get into it in a minute but uh it's fantastic there's so many good things in it like it's not just it's not just recipes. There's all these different staples and things. Like you could you could say this is my whole food philosophy now. Like we're just gonna cook this way, and you save a bunch of money. You cut down on all the food waste, and I think you save a lot of time too. Uh, yeah. So, so if if you have the first book, I mean, this one is a lot thicker. People yep. keep going on about how substantial it is. It has over 150 recipes, and it's really. It's a build off of my first book. Like the recipes are simplistic, the whole food plant-based, um, almost entirely oil-free. There's a few recipes with oil, um, gluten-free optional, nut-free optional. So it really should appease just about anybody who's interested in eating a whole food plant-based diet while also saving you money because of the zero waste slant. 
and even banana peel optional. You don't have to use yes. banana peel. There's an alternate. You could use uh, mushrooms. <laughs> mushrooms, oyster mushrooms. mushrooms. Yeah, yeah. I, I was asking my daughter, she's with me on this trip today, and I said, what, what things have we made from scrappy cooking that I can write down and mention? And she said, oh, we did the banana peel, but there's an alternate. You don't have to use those. You can use, uh, you can use mushrooms. So anyway, you've, you've thought of everybody, even the non-banana peel eaters. So um, yeah. <laughs> hello to everyone who's here live. A bunch of our regulars are here, and they're commenting, which is awesome. It's like a totally different format now than... Uh, than our usual software. So I'm glad it's working. Good morning, Mr. Jeffrey, fellow Canadian, all the time attendee of our show. Uh, he's excited. Britter, Sarah Slemp, Bailey Zane, Leisha, uh, Rocky Grunner, that's Doug, co normal co-host of this daily show. Uh, Kate, AK Rivercat, Danielle P, Phyllis Hauser, X and X, that's a new one to me. Um, but there we go. That's, that's a bunch of people here. So hello. Thank you all for attending. Um, all right. As you kind of know, Carly, we do this weather report thing because this, this is a four times a week show. We do the weather report where we run down the latest headlines in the plant-based world and all kinds of hot takes flying around. So you got to uh, give me your give me your best stuff here. Oh, I'm um, excited for this. This is when we offend people. It's like there's no uh, no holds barred here. This is the time to be uh, you know polarizing. Uh, make up opinions if you need to. That's what I do. <laughs> <laughs> um, all right, Travis Kelsey. Trav of course, everyone knows him. Boyfriend of Taylor Swift. Are they engaged yet or anything, or just still still boyfriend? They're still really dating. Know. I follow it very closely. <laughs> you do. Now. I was wondering if you did. That's that's good. Oh, are, you, yeah. are you a Swifty? I'm a huge Swifty. Oh yeah, huge Swifty. You, you're the, like the biggest. I I love it all, and I watched the football game. It got me into football this year. Um, yeah. and the football watched, game. Yeah, I watched the Super Bowl. <laughs> <laughs> that was one of the best days of my year so far. Um, wow. Okay. It was so good, and yeah, I'm a huge. I'm going to a concert in Toronto in the fall, so I'm very. Oh excited. yeah. Are you God. getting some kind of like VIP treatment? No, you, no, no, you no. Put that in your ticket they were, notes, like, uh, they were hard earned tickets, actually. <laughs> like it was a whole navigation process through like my friend's cousin got tickets and we had to like smooth her to get some of her tickets, but we got them. So I am wow. going and I'm so excited. <laughs> good. All right. Good for you. All right. Anyway, the, the story is uh, those he and his brother, Jason, have a podcast, I guess. It's called New Heights Podcast. Uh, they had Arnold Schwarzenegger on. And during an episode, uh, Travis admitted that he tried a vegan diet. He tried it for about a week, inspired by his brother, Jason, who's done it apparently for a while. Uh, his quote was, Jason does a lot of, uh, what is it, you're vegan? Like he didn't really, didn't really know, I guess, what it was. Um, but he had tried it for a week. He said, couldn't do it. Needed way more protein than just the beans. But at least he's doing it. Uh, in the same episode, Arnold Schwarzenegger said he's cut down his meat by 70%, inspired by James Cameron, and uh, and the brother Jason apparently is doing it as a weight loss thing. He's retired from football, and he says he's trying to lose two pounds a week, maintain muscle mass, and what he's doing is mostly vegan. So um, that's pretty good, right? Not as good as the guy sticking with it for, not as good as if Tra Travis Kelsey went vegan. But this, this is, is awesome. I this is the first I've heard of this. I think even the fact that they had Arnold on there and they're talking about a vegan diet is just a great thing. Yeah. Um, but hopefully we can win them over in time. I, I hope so. Do you know this podcast? Have you ever heard of this thing? Oh, New Heights. I see yeah. the the clips on it on TikTok all the time. Okay. All of them. <laughs> yeah, I know about right. it. I haven't Good. listened though. All right, you're plugged in more plugged in than I am. So I'm glad yeah. I uh, I'm glad I was able to teach you something that he is trying to be back. All right. Um, Next up today, uh, there's an Australian company called Val. They made the mammoth meatball. Do you remember that thing? It, they made they brought back woolly mammoth jeans somehow. I feel made, like I do remember this. Yes. yes. It was a goofy kind of stunt, but it was cultivated. It was like a cultivated meatball. It wasn't, you know, no animals harmed or anything. Um, they've now gotten, they're the fourth company in the world to get uh, approval for a cultivated meat product. In this case, it's quail. They're making quail. It's called, it's improved in Singapore. And they're doing, it's a rare Japanese quail. They somehow take cells from it. I don't know if they come from a feather or what they have to do to get them. But it's grown without uh, the animal-derived serum and antibiotics. So it's, it's slaughter-free. It's, it's, you know, you can't really call it vegan, but uh, very good for animals for this sort of thing to happen. So anyway, that's, uh, that's big news. And also, at the same time, uh, there's a new, a new life cycle analysis from a startup called Super Meat that uh, has determined that their cultivated chicken is 47% friendlier to the environment in terms of carbon emissions than land animal protein. And it was done with a, an independent research consultancy. So no, no uh, conspiracies here. I'm curious, probably, I, don't, I doubt you get into this stuff ever, but uh, are, you, are you at all excited about the cultivated meat thing? Like, would you do this or would you say, nope, this, I'm, being, I'm not even getting involved in animal cells? I think, I think it is such an awesome prospect 
for the future of animals. Like Mm -hmm. this really has the potential to eliminate factory farming, which is really such a source of horrible cruelty in our world. And a lot of the reason that many of us are vegan. However, however, I have no desire to eat meat at this point. I think a whole food plant-based diet is the best for our health and longevity. And I, I worry what the repercussions of that will be, whether people will actually be consuming more animal products if, um, if that type of meat becomes mainstream. However, the animals, like it could be a huge thing. What about you? Very similar to you. I'm, I'm worried about the health part of it. I wouldn't want to become like an all the time meat eater, but I think I would, I would try it. We I try it. Like there's some company that made, does it with, with pork and they, they grew, they grow it in four days from like cell to sausage, they said. And that we're like, that's kind of scary that it can happen that quickly. So yeah, aside from, you know, whatever health issues there might be with just regular meat, uh, I, I just wonder like what else gets introduced with when you grow something that fast. It just, it's just scary. Uh, but yeah. I'm very curious. I'm, I'm definitely pro cultivated meat. And uh, like you, I think it has the potential to be a massive, massive change. Uh, but, you know, just like the Beyond and Impossibles and stuff like that, like it kind of might over time erode our the health of healthfulness of a of a plant based diet because uh, it's not even plant based anymore. So yeah, I but I guess like instead of eating Beyond Meat or whatever, which obviously is very processed, then you would probably be opting for like we eat that stuff in our family like maybe once or twice a month. It'll be mm-hmm. like okay, we're going to a barbecue. I'm going to pick up a Beyond Burger to go on the barbecue or whatever else. So I wonder if then you would replace it with the. Right. Or or would it get you get carried away because the cruelty is no longer tied to the product? It's so hard to say. It's so hard to say. I have to think it's net beneficial. And then also there's this whole conversation about like the hormones used in meat and the antibiotics used in farm animals and how that's creating antibiotic resistance for people who consume animal products. I have to think a lot of that would be eliminated if the meat is grown in a right. lab exactly and like Which, heavy metals in the seafood like all yes. that stuff gets gets taken care of so it's suddenly becomes a, a much healthier choice so i don't know it, it'll be very interesting uh i'm glad it's happening and uh, obviously we're gonna stay on top of that because that's that's where we get a lot of controversial news stories so can't can't let that go uh all right you mentioned cruelty a few minutes ago i didn't know this, this is new to me and sad uh PETA is now calling on all retailers including whole foods to stop selling any thai coconut milk products that's not a brand it's, that's coconut milk products from thailand because Peter did an investigation and they found that there's the monkeys. extreme use of monkeys. I had like never heard this in, in uh, I've been vegan for, I don't know, 13, 14 years now. Uh, it never occurred to me that like, maybe I shouldn't choose coconut milk products because animals are abused in the process. Or at least get them from Sri Lanka, which is where Co-op in the UK does for their store brand. Um, so I guess as long as you know it's it's that, it's from Sri Lanka, then, then you're good. Uh, but yeah. this is now on my radar. I, did you know this? I did. I have heard of this and I make an effort to buy a certain brand. I feel like it's CHA, Cha or something, Cha, which I heard was okay for the monkeys, but maybe not. Now that you say that, if they're trying to ban all ones in Thailand, I'm a little bit worried about the ones that I've been buying, but I do eat, I like, I love coconut based curries and sauces, even though I know sometimes they're not the healthiest. So we go through quite a bit of coconut milk in this house. I'm going to have to look into the brand I buy. It's from Costco and it's like organic cha or something. I don't know if anyone in the comments knows what I'm talking about, but I thought the monkeys, I have heard of this before. All right, good. Well, news to me. So I will definitely be careful of this because that, uh, that is important. I don't care that much about where my coffee comes from and all that. As long as it, you know, I probably shouldn't say it. Somehow, when it's in animals that are getting abused, I feel worse than when it's people who are just having it, having it being treated unfairly. That's probably a bad uh, take. I probably should reverse that stance and say <laughs> people are people are being untreated unfairly. It's just as bad as animals. So uh, I'll take that one back. It's, all right. I, what I like to say, and it's when it, it's it all tied to the conversation of veganism. It's like unfortunately, there's no food that's not tied to some form of cruelty. So like even when people get on like a high horse about being like a very pure vegan and I'm like, well, like where did your avocados or your coconut milk come from? Mm -hmm. It's just impossible. So you have to do the best you can, which I think is just basically what you're saying. Like now that we know about the coconut milk, you know, what can you do? Exactly. 
You can make a little better choice. And that's right. The whole definition of veganism is about trying your hardest or as much as is practical or whatever, reasonable. Uh, so yeah, you got to draw a line somewhere and it's up to everybody where you do that. All right. Uh, bird flu is back. This is not good because it's bad for eggs, I guess. And it raises egg prices, um, which means maybe a lot more mainstreamers will start using vegan eggs. Carly, what is the best? vegan egg first of all do you have do you have like a scrappy egg that you do like your own uh egg yeah like so i have a, i have an omelet in here that's made with chickpea flour which is really great like if you're looking for an omelet substitute um but my favorite that i probably make every other week or so is just like a tofu scramble and mm -hmm. i find this definitely gets any egg craving out there so you just scramble up tofu the recipes in my first book with black salt turmeric um scramble it up serve it with whatever veggies you want and it's delicious and that black salt like that sulfur taste really emulates egg for some reason uh -huh. i can't yeah, even for some reason the thought of eating a regular egg now like scrambled eggs is really like stomach churning um i don't know why that is but yeah i think it's a, i mean i don't know even the black salt for me if i smell that stuff too strongly i mean it just it's that sulfur smell so I'm, I'm with you on that one i never really liked eggs that much to begin with um, yeah but so you don't do like a just egg or any of the chickpea no i don't really buy that. it um it's very expensive just yeah. egg is very expensive and then i find like it's like one bottle and you get like maybe enough for two people so mm -hmm. it's just doesn't it seems a bit nonsensical sometimes to me and then I don't know how good it is for you, like a lot of oil and um, whatever else in there. But I think it's great. Like, it's certainly an egg substitute. Like, yeah. it, it certainly tastes like egg. Yep. Our co-host Doug uses it all the time. I don't I'm like not an egg craver. So I just, like you, do the tofu scramble sometimes. Uh, yeah. But otherwise, don't, don't really dabble in the plant-based eggs. Uh, all right. And last up, before we get to scrappy cooking, um, Billie Eilish, vegan, of course. And a bunch of other songwriters, musicians, pop stars, Katy Perry, Nicki Minaj, Casey Musgraves, and many more have written an open letter about AI and how it's bad and how it could potentially ruin musicians' livelihood. Uh, they said this assault on human creativity must be stopped. And they're, they're asking for people to, uh, to uh, or tech companies to pledge to make AI tools that do not undermine or replace the human artistry of songwriters. So that sounds like a big ask to me and one that's not going to do anything at all. Uh, are you, Carly, you worried about the AI recipe makers or social media stars replacing you? Not really, but I do think yeah. it's like, it is concerning. I feel like For there sure. was that whole Taylor Swift controversy where there was like AI generated, like provocative photos of her that looked mm. very real that came out and then she slammed them down. So I, I worry about if it's being used for like negative means and I do worry about it replacing jobs. I mean, I think that it very quickly is going to write better and more effectively than most human beings. So where does that put authors? And yeah, yeah. I mean, it, it's great as a tool. Like it's great as a prompt tool. I I'll use chat GBT sometimes if I can't think of like, Oh, like I really need help starting a script for like a recipe video, but then if it goes farther than that, I'm a bit concerned. How about you? Yeah, I'm. I don't know. I don't know. What, I mean, yeah, like it's going to it's going to get better than humans at a whole lot of things. Uh, the big question for me is like, will it replace the human? Just the human, right? Like, I, like one day there will be rest, uh, an AI that can make good scrappy cooking recipes. Mm -hmm. Right? It tells how to use pineapple skins just as well as Carly can. But can it go and charm and be a you know like mm -hmm. a person the way Carly can on Instagram? So I I don't know about that. Um, but yeah, I don't know. I, I mean, I think they're right to be concerned, but these, these people, they're, they're already, I think they're okay. I think they'll be okay either way. Uh, Billy Ives, Katy Perry, Nicki Minaj, Casey Musgraves. Um, yeah, they'll, they'll surely be fine. <laughs> yes, they do. <laughs> All right, good. So there's your weather report. Um, no main article today because we've got uh, such a special guest. It is Carly. Uh, so let's dive into scrappy cooking a little bit. Um, I mean, this is awesome. You mentioned this, I think you mentioned this when you were on our No Made Athletes show, like right, right as, uh, as Plant U was coming out, maybe. And I was asking you about something. And somehow you said these scrappy cooking videos are what's just killing it on Instagram right now. And I don't think you knew at that point that that was going to be the next book. Uh, but, but it did. So like, did, 
were you always into the food waste reduction thing and this like, you know, cooking in this scrappy manner, cooking scrappily or, or did it kind of just happen? Like you got this viral hit and you're like, this is a massive opportunity. I need to start making more of these things and then it led to this. Yeah, a bit of both, I would say. I definitely grew up in a home with parents who were like naturally scrappy, like embodied that kind of scrappy, using everything, saving leftovers. My dad yesterday went over to his house and he was marinating potato peels and pickle juice and cooking them up. So like mm -hmm. there was there was some sense of that, but not in such a literal sense. And it really wasn't until probably I was publishing my first book where I heard a statistic that shocked me, which was that 30 to 40% of all food in the US ends up in landfills. And really, the shocking part came from that the prices of groceries in Canada are just unbelievable. Like, it is so expensive. And if we're throwing away so much food, because the largest percent of food, of food waste, people hate to hear this, but it's in consumer homes. We waste more than restaurants and grocery stores. And it makes sense because we're, we're not having to call to like a bottom line, right? So that was very shocking to me. And then I learned about the environmental aspect. And that's that when food ends up in landfills, which it inevitably does, it makes up the largest component of US landfills and it emits methane gas, which is terrible for our environment. And to put this into perspective, food waste contributes more emissions in the airline industry, which I feel like when we're talking about climate change in the environment, transportation often dominates this conversation, whereas we really should be talking about the food on our plate. So knowing this, I was like, what the heck? Why is no one talking about this? So I threw up an orange peel candy recipe one day, walked away from my phone. I had called it scrappy cooking, not thinking much of it and came back and people had gone crazy over it millions of views um so many people commenting and i thought oh light bulb moment this is something that people care about this is a great this scrappy cooking idea um which is very literal in my videos of like we talked about kind of banana peel bacon is a great facilitation for conversations about reducing food waste so it became obvious quite quickly after starting those videos that I want this would be a great subject for my second book. And truly, when I wrote it, there was a lot of times that I thought, oh, man, maybe this was a mistake. I don't know if people are going to resonate with it. Um, those fears have definitely been tampered this week because I've seen such a great response. But it's really cool because the one thing I like to tell people about the book is it it, it isn't literal in the sense where we're making banana peel and bacon. There are recipes like right. that. There's probably right. about maybe 20 of the over 150 recipes. But I really wanted a cookbook where people could interchange the vegetables and produce in their pantry and to empower people how to cook with plants. Because I think that is the key to reducing food waste. It's being able to cook and being able to be confident enough to be like, okay, I don't have a butternut squash, but I have a sweet potato here. I'm going to change that. So the recipes are really built around this concept of like, make this base and then use whatever vegetable you have on hand. I, mm -hmm. I make recommendations based on what I used in the recipe development, but then I also include substitutions. So my goal is to help people learn to cook and then to help people just use up the vegetables that they bought well-intentioned. Yeah, I think that, that surprised me a lot about the book. I, was, I don't know why I was expecting that it would be like all like literal scrappy cooking recipes. Of course it would, right? No one needs 150 of those, probably. Uh, yeah. But like what I said, it's like so impressive that it's like this system of just, you, it makes so many staples and things. And sometimes using the scraps, like the apple scrap uh, vinegar and yeah. the apple scrap honey, like you can make stuff from the scraps that maybe aren't entirely based on the scraps. Um, but I think the fact that it's like a big money-saving, waste-saving kind of system way of cooking, that's what's so impressive. And I think that's, I think that's why uh, certainly it will, it will strike a chord with people. Yeah, I really didn't like it. My first book was such a, I was so surprised how many people cook out of it. And then when I started doing in-person events, I'd have people come up to me and say, I've been cooking out of your book. Um, I'm off type two diabetes medication. It's really impacted my life. And I mean, I did not want to lose that with this book. Right. Like I wanted them to be really healthy, nourishing, whole food, plant-based, delicious recipes while also addressing this concern. Like we have a whole pasta chapter, like there, there is truly something for everyone. So I'm glad, I'm sure you were pleasantly surprised that it wasn't just. Oh, of course. Yes. Yeah. <laughs>
<laughs> yeah. Although we do this graph thing, like it, right now in my refrigerator at home is a stack of uh, orange halves, like the peels. Yeah. Because Ellery, my daughter, she she's saving those for doing the orange peel thing. Uh, oh, I'm so glad. Yeah, she's she's a, as you know, she's a, she's a super fan. <laughs> um, anyway, so I'm curious, like, how did you how did you learn the stuff, especially the stuff that is about the literal scrappy things? Like, once you made the orange peel thing, like, how did you then? figure out that you could make banana peel bacon or yeah, pineapple or, skin tea. Like, did you have to like do a bunch of research and start like becoming the expert on that stuff? Yeah, exactly. So basically it would start by like buying something from the grocery store. So you buy a pineapple and you're like, okay, I'm throwing out half this pineapple. Like what can I do with it? So my first step always when I'm doing a scrap is I got to Google whether it's edible because <laughs> I do not want to um, make myself sick or somebody else. And then I'll start like researching history of recipes. Like oftentimes there's historical recipes. Like I know um, pineapple skin tea originated in Jamaica, which is referenced in the book. So then just having fun with it and then experimenting and building on it. There's, there's more um, fun you can have with things like, I don't know, radish tops, which very obviously in my mind you can eat, but then it's mm -hmm. like, okay, well, what can I do with radish tops? Can I replace them with the basil in a pesto recipe? Can I make chips out of them like kale chips? So once I know I can eat something, then, then the fun really starts. And all of the recipes I wanted to mention, people love this from my original book, but they include all of the ingredients on top and then the finished dish below. And I also have, which people are loving, this have this make that index at the beginning of the book so this really ties into this concept of reducing waste from the ground up and it's like okay bread the most commonly wasted food in the world you can just flip to this index and be like okay I have some bread that's getting a little bit hard um here are five different recipes where I can use that scrap up or that that ingredient up in the book so I tried to make it as really practical as possible yeah, I noticed that uh, in the in the digital copy I was looking at today, I saw that you could you, it sorted by if you want to, you can sort by ingredients. So you can say, "How much mm -hmm. this? How do I use it up?" Uh, you mentioned the bread thing as being the most wasted food in the world. That was news to me, uh, and also that's like perfect example of all the historical things because like you've got a panzanella salad in there. Uh, yeah, and I, do you have uh, like a like a breadcrumbs as kind of instead of Parmesan cheese on top of pasta deal? Yeah, I have breadcrumbs. I have a breadcrumb recipe in this, and then it's used throughout the book. Or you can yeah. use store-bought breadcrumbs. Like, everything's basically made from scratch in the book. I'll be like, okay, there's sun-dried tomatoes in this uh, Tuscan gnocchi recipe. You can buy them, or you can make them. Yeah, so I there's a that. lot of, like, um, scratch things, because I think it's fun. Like, I fell so in love with scrappy cooking and this idea that wow, I can make sun-dried tomatoes at home. I can make beet powder at home. Like, it's really fun, right? If you have the time. And if yeah. you don't, there's a lot of quick and easy recipes in here as well. Exactly. That, that's what I meant by the system idea. Like, we made, like I said, the pantry bean salad the other day that used sun-dried tomatoes. And I saw it, and like, I could make my own if I wanted to go to that level. And if, and if my the time wasn't my concern right now, it was more about I want to be totally waste-free or totally homemade, whatever. Um, you can do that. So that, that is awesome. It's fantastic. Uh, Mr. Jeffrey here, a fellow Canadian, points out that this book concept would make a really good app, too. Um, I, is that already in the works? It must be, right? No, 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 no. Oh, my gosh. As you, I'm sure, know, apps are, like, such a beast. <laughs> such a beast. Way beyond, um, way beyond a book. So, no, no plans for an app with this concept now. But you never know. Never say never. Right. You're going to get some app people emailing you after, uh, yeah. after two weeks from now. Whatever the, whatever's <laughs> happening then, you're going to get some app requests like that. Uh, Juliana Ariaga, our uh, designer, says she loves the concept and loves the cover. So that is high praise from an excellent designer. Uh, and let's see. Bailey Zane Branding said, my book just got delivered, ran out mid-pod, and snagged it. So Yay! look at that. Social proof. Someone else is buying the book. So there we go. Um, yeah. The cover, right, cool. was shot, the cover was shot by um, this amazing photographer named Linda Pugliez, and she mm -hmm. shot Martha Stewart before. So oh. that was really cool. Um, but I came up with this concept. I'm like, I want to be sitting across from a table um, mm -hmm. and have people like sitting across from me and like just make it fully scrappy. And then we also did this shot, which I wanted to be the cover of the book, but my publisher was oh, not yeah. so hot on it. <laughs> um, but to me, this looks like the start of like a horror film and I'm like, this is perfect, but they thought the legs and the feet on the food might not go over as well. Yeah. So I got it 
right inside the cover. <laughs> I've, I've heard people say that like uh, dismembered appendages are not uh, not great hits on things. So that that makes sense. And the Nomi Dathi cookbook, there's a there's a just a torso and there's no head and maybe the arms are missing or the leg. Like it's just the torso. And uh, Veg News actually thought it was my body. They put in some. I thought it was your body. It's no, not. No, no, no. I was. Who I was shot kidding. that thing? It was just a stock photo. I don't know. I mean, they 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 did even the the food on the front of it is like a stock. But you can tell they at least photoshopped in stuff. I had no idea. I really? thought it was you. No, I. I, I love that cover again. too. Like yeah, that book is too. so popular. That one. Uh, that one. Yeah, and that's been our. I said that as far as like just consistent sales. Consistent that's, sales, uh, that's people love it. Yeah, I yep. mean, whoever did the cover, like that was brilliant. It was. I I really enjoyed that cover, and like I said, it, even though it violates the uh, appendage rule, uh, I guess in reverse, uh, it, it turned out great. That's so, so funny. There you go. All right. Um, last question here, Carly, and then we'll just talk about. Well, I guess quick. Here's my dinner problem. My kids are both really serious about soccer. They're excellent players, which is fun, but we are just the parents who are constantly doing soccer driving. They each train four nights a week. So, like, there's one night a week, maybe, that we can all sit down and say, hey, we cooked the dinner. Now we're going to eat it all. Um, what do we do? Like, like, because I don't even eat that healthily anymore sometimes because I feel like all the time we're on the run, so we're just eating Whole Foods, you know, homemade pizza things where you buy a crust and you put the sauce on and then do vegan sprinkle on top. But, like, it's a lot of that. So. Like I said, we did the pantry bean salad the other day because I was I was ahead of things and I made it during the day and we had it at night on toast or on sourdough that my wife made. So like that works. But what do you got? What's what's this the best is idea? a rock your brock mac and cheese. So this is a one pot mac and cheese recipe that's vegan, obviously, and you grate carrot and broccoli into it, and it it comes together in fifteen minutes, twenty to fifteen, fifteen to okay. twenty minutes, and it's Good. one pot, so limited mess. If I was like making a meal. For to feed a crowd and kids at night, that's, that's probably what I would make. Okay. Um, tons of bowls as well. I've got this great new nutty noodle bowl. Again, it's going to be really easy. It's just cooking some rice vermicelli noodles, vermicelli, vermicelli, not sure how to pronounce. And then um, grating up whatever veg you have in the fridge and making a quick peanut sauce. Nice. That'd okay. Be a good one. Feed, feed the kids. Um... Cheap pan tacos I've got in here. I'm looking for ease. Tacos is good. Tacos works. We've done that one before. I'm not yeah, gonna so, them. yeah, I've got these great tacos. And again, they have like a separate um, carrot top chimichurri, which you don't uh -huh. have to make, you but you could that. just buy chimichurri. Um, yeah. Or you could just use like whatever sauce. But there's these are sheet pan tacos. So you just literally throw all your vegetables onto a sheet pan, toss them in some spices, and then they're ready to go. And you, again, I would probably use a store bought sauce. Um, that's the beauty about this cookbook. Like you can kind of take it. There's a pizza, kind of what you were talking about. Yeah. Um, you can kind of take it as far as you want in terms of how crazy you want to go making everything from scratch. But I'll be yeah. the first to admit, like, we're huge fans of like Caesar salads in this house. So, um, and probably not traditional Caesars by any means, but I'll like grill up some tofu and then I'll just use like a store-bought Caesar dressing and I'll add like a bunch of seeds to it, chop up some romaine and it's done in like 20 minutes, but I'm not making my own salad dressing right. like every time I'm cooking. It depends on the night. Yeah, um, I was wondering about that. Like how, how deep do you go into this day-to-day -day at home cooking? Like yeah. how much are you... I cook out of the book often, but I find, so I have a whole section on homemade salad dressings and one of them is a great hummus Caesar, but I find oftentimes I'll just use a store bought. Like mm -hmm. it's like, it's, it's as far as you want to take it. I think if you're, you, it, it also depends on what stage of life you're in. I think if you have yeah. health concerns, that's when you have to start really like digging deep, but hopefully you can avoid those to begin with by eating a semi-healthy whole food plant-based diet you know yeah but like not it. perfect i'm not right. perfect no i'm i bet you are all <laughs> right uh Dale Stanton says she just added to her amazon cart uh mr jeffy points out that doug clicked by as soon as he heard tacos because doug just eats it's, it's all he eats at home tacos and burritos is his whole uh his whole diet like kate says maybe matt will make bowls again i don't know what that's referencing to probably some goofy thing i did with bowls before uh and I saw another one, but uh, but no. Anyway, uh, last one, Carly. What's been the very most like of all the scrappy cooking recipes that you've done on Instagram, TikTok, I guess? Uh, like, what's the one that has has 
just been the most successful, most viral. Yeah. yeah, I think it's probably, and I'll find the recipe, I put it in here, and I added this last minute after the recipe went so viral on social media, and my publisher was like, we can't do this, and I said, we have to. <laughs> so it's the scrap pacha. So this is a, a kind of twist on a scarpaccia recipe, which is like a traditional Mediterranean um, zucchini tart. It's so okay. delicious. I'm not even a huge fan of zucchini, but it's so easy. You just like add um, cornmeal and flour and dried rosemary to a bowl. And then you drain your zucchini and add that zucchini water, the zucchini and uh, red onion, mix it up it, into a batter and then bake it. And it makes this like great flatbread and uh -huh. I just reposted the video it went super viral the first time I posted it wow um, and it's good I'm, I'm shocked that that's the the most I mean it, it looks I great it looks fantastic I just thought people kind of hate zucchini in general and like or not, not I think it was I used the z drained zucchini water so like you drain out the water and then you use that in the batter another one is like a peanut butter jar noodle dish so shaking the peanut butter jar which I showed you the nutty noodle salad there mm -hmm. very popular yeah, um, do that I'm trying to think of anything like very scrap delicious. <laughs> the ones that are more practical people make, right? Yeah, like, sure. so that's probably why. We do the, we, both my kids do the uh, dressing out of the mustard. Yes. That is a, yes. a Carly contribution in my house now. Uh, we've also done the, let's see, Ellery made the death by chocolate pancakes already. We've done cabbage steaks. Uh, as I said, we got the orange peels in the fridge and the dill pickle chips. That is the one that as soon as we get home, uh, we're going to make because the kids have been Yay. asking about that for, for months, really. Um, awesome. All right. Well, Carly, this is awesome. I'm, I'm serious how excited about this book. I like this thing. I, I love the fact that this, honestly, that it can save so much money if you do it right. And, and as much time as you're willing to put in, uh, you know, you can save that much money. You can reduce that much waste. Um, but that it's so flexible like that. I think it's fantastic. We didn't even mention the whole time. Like, we're just talking about eating whole plants here. Uh, this is super healthy food. And you know, you can do it quickly, you can do it cheaply, you can do it not very wastefully, and it's all fantastic. So thank you so much for uh, for your work and this book, uh, for joining us on the show. It's been great. I think people really enjoyed having you here, and uh, we'll get this out to our podcast audience and email people about it tomorrow. Awesome. So spread the can word we, far and wide. Do you yes. think I can post this on my YouTube? I of course <laughs> you can. If you, uh, if you have a way to do that, I'd be Okay, let's laughing. see when I exit if it, if it allows me to, like, post it out. Yeah, and we'll if it see. doesn't, then let me know and I'll okay, do cool. whatever we need to do to make that happen because obviously that would be great for us too. Awesome. Thank you so much. All this right, well, best of luck with everything else with the rest of this uh, frantic, crazy week. I know how it is, and uh, it's fun. I took a picture of my desk um, when I did this. I hope you do the same thing to remember this. I, the desk was covered in stuff. It was just day after, it was just every half hour there's a new one of these shows, and I'm sure for you it's it's many times that much right now. So uh, good luck. Have fun with Thank it. Thank you. Enjoy so it. much Don't gratitude, Matt. Have a great day. All right. See you, Carly.